Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up and this week we're going to take another look at Starlink. Uh, this is the SpaceX satellite broadband service and we haven't talked about it since February but there's been a lot of developments. More satellites launched, they have a sign up page now so you can put in your zip code and be notified when service is available in your area and we have some hints about the speed. So lots to talk about now so let's get to it. Now, there have been a lot of developments with Starlink since we first talked about it in February. Uh, definitely check out that video if you want to learn more about how it's going to work. Uh, what they have added, though, are 238 additional satellites to their constellation. It is estimated that 538 of the orbiting satellites are operational at the moment. A few are on their way back down. Uh, and here's a really cool shot from SpaceX inside of their fairing on the second stage of a block of 60 of those satellites getting launched to orbit on a recent launch. Uh, it looks like they're doing about a launch every two weeks or so. In fact, there's going to be another one next week of another block of 60. So they're really cranking out these launches. And again, SpaceX has the ability to do this because not only do they own the satellites, they also own the rocket, and the rocket is reusable. So the cost for launching these things is very low comparatively uh, against other competing services. Uh, if you want to track the progress of the constellation, uh, this guy on, on Twitter, Jonathan McDowell, is an astronomer who's been keeping track of all sorts of human-made devices that are orbiting the planet, and he's been doing a lot of work trying to figure out how many satellites of this Starlink constellation are actually working, and you can follow him on Twitter to get more information about that. Now, we don't yet know how fast the Starlink service is going to be, but we have a lot more information than we did in February. Uh, the first item was actually hiding in plain sight, and I came across this on the Reddit Starlink group. Apparently, somebody from SpaceX in the Starlink department uh, sent an email to a Nebraska regulatory body that was looking at rural broadband options. And they sent this email in that was included with some of the public documents that were released as part of that group's work. And as you can see here, the rep from SpaceX is saying you can expect service levels of 100 megabits per second downstream and 40 megabits per second upstream. Now, for those of us who have access to cable internet or those who have fiber internet, this is going to seem very slow. But in portions of the United States where there are not many good options, this is light years beyond what's currently offered by some slow DSL service or cellular or uh, even some of the current satellite providers. And that's a really good number, I think, to start from. And I heard from a lot of you over the months here as we've been talking about this topic that even something at that speed is so much better than what's currently being offered. Uh, they're also promising latency at around 30 milliseconds or so, so that's also very good. Uh, but they do say, with kind of a disclaimer, that it's going to depend on how dense the user base is going to be within a region. And I'm guessing this is going to also depend on how many satellites that SpaceX can get up in orbit as their customer base grows, because there's a limited amount of bandwidth that each satellite can provide. It's very similar to your home internet connection and your Wi-Fi router, right? You've got only so much capacity. And I think if you've got an area that's densely populated, uh, that might be an issue. And we're starting to hear more and more from SpaceX about that particular issue, which is why I think we're really going to see Starlink marketed almost exclusively to areas that are more sparsely populated versus areas that are more densely populated. And I think that's a good uh, area for them to pursue, just given how there are so few options for people who are in uh, sparsely populated areas. And Elon Musk himself also hinted at what the capacity is of the upcoming Starlink offering. Uh, he appeared right before the COVID lockdown at the Satellite 2020 trade show. It must be an industry thing for satellite communications. And in the course of that discussion, he said that Starlink is not going to be good for high density situations. He also said that you cannot have a lot of customers in Los Angeles, for example, because the bandwidth per cell is simply not high enough. Along those lines, the FCC is rolling out a $16 billion fund uh, to get more of these broadband options out to sparsely populated areas throughout the United States. Now, I should note that this has happened before and nobody got anything, but the companies got the money. 
Hopefully this time they're going to be a little bit better about making sure that the dollars invested, taxpayer and ratepayer dollars, are invested into actually bringing services out to these places. And it looks like SpaceX wants to uh, compete in this auction. Now in the document that they issued about uh, how this is going to work, uh, they have a number of performance tiers that companies can apply for. Now we don't yet know which of these uh, that SpaceX is going to apply for, but I have a feeling they might be in the minimum or baseline categories just given what we saw from that regulatory filing uh, because they have to be able to deliver these speeds to everyone uh, irrespective of capacity in orbit, I think. So we'll have to see exactly where SpaceX decides to go with it. Uh, but it's interesting in that the FCC is defining gigabit, at least insofar as this effort is concerned, as being greater than or equal to one gigabit per second downstream, but at least 500 megabits per second upstream. And even in areas that have cable gigabit service being offered, Comcast and Cox and all the other companies are calling it gigabit, but your upstream is only 35 megabits per second. Here the FCC says it needs to be at least 500 to be considered gigabit as part of this rural broadband initiative. And I thought that was interesting. They will never enforce, at least this FCC, uh, will never enforce these uh, bandwidth levels on existing services. But I did find it intriguing that the FCC does consider uh, half a gigabit upstream to be important for a true gigabit level uh, connection. So we'll have to see if that ever works its way down to our favorite cable companies. Uh, the other thing to note here is the latencies. Uh, so they have two different tracks for latency. One is uh, less than or equal to 750 uh, milliseconds. And you can see there's a higher weight assigned to that. And the FCC is really pushing for low latency connections. So let's say you're coming in with the baseline, but you can't meet the less than 100 milliseconds, then you're going to be weighted differently and have less of an opportunity to get at some of those dollars if you can't meet their latency requirements in addition to the bandwidth requirements. Now, initially, the FCC was not going to allow any satellite provider to compete in the low latency category. And that meant SpaceX and others who can deliver less than 100 milliseconds via a satellite connection would be considered high latency, even if their performance was better than that. Uh, so prior to the auction being released, SpaceX uh, did a short PowerPoint presentation to the FCC to make their case. You can find that at the link you see on screen here. Uh, they showed a slide that shows the difference in altitude between their Starlink satellites at 550 kilometers versus uh, the geosynchronous satellites at 35,786 kilometers. And they said, look, just by basic physics, because we're so much closer to Earth, uh, the light time is significantly reduced. We should be able to get latency uh, below 50 milliseconds. Uh, the FCC did back off and allow SpaceX to participate as a low latency provider, but they said they have serious doubts that they can actually deliver that. So although SpaceX will be allowed to compete in the low latency competition, they're going to have to work harder to prove that they can actually meet those latency requirements versus wireline competitors. Uh, the FCC here has made it very clear that the laws of physics argument is not going to work with them. They need to see proof that these satellites can deliver less than 100 milliseconds of performance to customers on the ground. Uh, they list a number of factors like propagation delay and a whole bunch of other things that might result in higher latencies. And SpaceX is going to have to work to prove that they can do better than that. Also of interest is that the FCC is not allowing any satellite provider to compete in the gigabit performance tier. Uh, SpaceX didn't make an argument about this particular ruling, so it's pretty safe to say that we're not going to be seeing gigabit performance as the FCC defines it out of Starlink. We're probably again going to be in that baseline or minimum category when they do in fact submit an application. So even though we're not looking at gigabit service here, I do think there's going to be tremendous interest in even that 100 down, 40 up that appeared in that Nebraska regulatory filing. I think that's going to be a game changer for a lot of folks who are really struggling with very limited options. And the biggest news from Starlink over the last two weeks is that they have updated their website to include now a sign-up form where you can put your email, your zip code, and your country and you'll get on their list. And I suggest you do this ASAP. And the reason is, is that they're very quickly reaching the point where they can start doing some public beta testing 
of the surface. It looks like they're doing some private stuff now with SpaceX employees, but I'm sure very soon they're gonna wanna start testing this out in some of those rural locations across the United States and maybe even in Canada. So get on that website uh, and fill out the info there because I don't think you're going to be around too many other people. And the result here is that there's probably a very good chance you might get into that beta and start getting access to this earlier than its formal commercial rollout. So fill it out. Uh, I filled it out because I'm still struggling with my upstream speeds. Uh, the service though may not be a good fit for where I live because even though I'm in kind of a rural area, I'm very close to suburbs and relatively close to cities. So the city of New Haven, Connecticut is less than a half an hour away from me. And then Providence is about an hour that way. New York and Boston are about two hours away from me. So even though I'm in this small spot, uh, everyone around me is much more densely populated. So I think it's probably not gonna be ideal for where I am, but I think a lot of you watching uh, may be very good candidates for this public beta. And just again, get that info in there and they will let you know when something is ready for you to try out. Uh, a couple of things we don't know about yet is exactly how much the base stations are going to cost. Uh, there's been some quotes from Elon Musk out there that, saying that they're still struggling with getting the cost down on the base station. Uh, but he did say in that satellite uh, 2020 interview that it's going to be very simple. You just point it at the sky and plug it in and it's going to have some motors in it apparently to kind of direct the uh, antenna components to lock onto the satellites. And I believe the satellites will have some beam forming capabilities as well. So again, sign up, give it a shot and see what happens. Another great resource for uh, people who are interested in this service is the Starlink subreddit. Uh, these folks on this subreddit are really on top of stuff. And the second there's any piece of news coming out of anywhere, it shows up on the Starlink Reddit. In fact, a lot of what we're talking about today, I sourced through the Reddit here. So definitely check that out too. And I know a lot of you have been asking about my Comcast Gigabit Pro installation and whether or not it is still happening. Uh, as far as I know, it is still happening. They uh, last wrote to me at the end of May saying they were getting some things in order from a uh, infrastructure standpoint, and I should be hearing from them soon. Uh, so hopefully soon is soon because it's been a few weeks now, but I'm hopeful that uh, by the end of the summer, my bandwidth issues here will be uh, largely resolved and I'll keep you posted on the status of that. It's going to be a fun project because it is two gigabit symmetrical and my network right now is only a single gigabit. So I have to upgrade my router. I have to upgrade some of the switches in the house and we'll be kind of operating some things at faster speeds and some things at regular gigabit speeds. And then of course, whatever we can get over the Wi-Fi. It's gonna be a fun ongoing project and I'm sure you'll all enjoy watching that. Uh, now this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you. Uh, we had a couple of super chatters on some of the live streams we did last week, including somebody who calls themselves Suka D's Nuts, uh, Tech Flood and Carol also contributed via super chat. And we also have some new supporters to thank. They include Mike Patterson, who made a gold level contribution and Mohammed Kadir, who joined our donor box page. I wanna thank both of them for their contributions to the channel, along with everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too, because all of those things equal channel growth and I greatly appreciate your support. And if you wanna support the channel, you can keep watching. Uh, you can also go to my donor box page at lon.tv support to make a monthly or a one-time contribution. And of course, we support the YouTube membership program where you can get pretty cool badges on your name. And if you comment or chat, you will have that badge appear next to your name uh, in those communications during some of our video and live streams. Uh, we also did some live streams this week too, as a matter of fact, we were playing around with that new Lenovo Flex 5 with the AMD 4500U processor. Uh, we also unboxed and evaluated the Amazon Fire HD8 tablets. There are now two different ones. Uh, we also took a portion of that live stream and made it into an unboxing video for the Extras channel. It's always good to be able to get multiple uses out of the work I do here sitting at the desk. And then of course we reviewed that Lenovo Ryzen based laptop and those Fire tablets. I didn't do as much production this week, uh, partly because I'm gonna be out for about a day and a half this week. 
uh, with my local high school's graduation. We're going to be doing a live stream of their drive up graduation and it's going to take all day. It's like a, a pretty long day. We've got them coming in in groups of 10. There's about 170 or so graduates. So it's going to uh, be a long day. It's going to be a good workout for my uh, laptop and we're going to be doing it with vMix. So I might, if I have time, kind of do some B-roll throughout the day and kind of show you what we did to make it work. And again, I hope that laptop can uh, keep itself going. We're going to keep the laptop inside so it doesn't overheat, uh, but I'm pretty confident vMix will be able to get it done. Uh, now this week on the channel, though, I did shoot some stuff in anticipation of having some time away from the studio. Uh, I did shoot, finally, my video about how I am isolating devices on my network. Uh, so what I did with the Unify Dream Machine router and my Unify wireless access points was put all of my IoT devices on a different network, even though we're all connecting through the same hardware through the use of VLAN tagging. Uh, and I finished the video. I just wanted to have somebody look at it to make sure I'm getting all of the firewall rules set correctly, because the last thing I want to do is advise people on something that uh, is not fully secure. So I'm just having somebody double check it for me and that video will be up as soon as I get some confirmation that I did it right. Uh, we're also going to be doing my monthly sponsored video from Plex and this month we're going to look at their new watch together feature. So what you can do is actually sync up a number of people to the video that you're watching and that includes video that's on your, your Plex server but also the free to watch stuff that Plex is now offering and you can all get on a Skype call together and then hit a button and everybody's going to be at the same place in the movie and if somebody has to get up to go to the bathroom if they pause it everybody pauses it's pretty cool we'll be detailing all of that and if I get time I'm definitely going to try to get to this uh, QNAP device that we live streamed about the other day I've got it all set up I'm ready to review it I just need time to shoot the video uh, so stay tuned and I think I've got an HP printer in this week that we're going to be checking out as well now, if you want to be notified anytime I go live or do anything else here on the channel, you can click that bell icon. And depending on your configuration, you'll get emails and push notifications whenever we do anything here on the channel. We have other places where you can find me, including my extras channel for unboxings and supplementary content. Uh, you can check out all of the live streams we've done at lon.tv slash live streams if you want to have uh, tens of hours of content to watch of me tinkering with stuff. Uh, you can engage with the channel through my email list. The Facebook group continues to be a great resource for me and for many viewers, so you're welcome to join us there. I think we're over 1,000 people now, which is great. And then we've got the store where I sell previously used items. And if you want to get notified anytime something gets added to the store, uh, sign up for the store alert email. Uh, because one of the things on my list for this week is to get those Amazon tablets out the door and uh, probably the Lenovo uh, two-in-one PC with the Ryzen chip as well. I'm going to probably keep the Acer around here just so we have one of those Ryzen's to look at as a benchmark for stuff, uh, but I don't need two, so we're going to be getting rid of that at a pretty good price, so be sure to sign up for that email alert and you'll be notified when that laptop is ready for sale. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap-up. Thank you all for your continued support of the channel and your viewership. Please stay safe out there. Uh, and hopefully we'll get through this summer and be on the other side of this pandemic and we can all be out in uh, public again. Uh, thanks again for everything. And I will be back here later on this week with more videos about tech stuff. And of course, next week uh, with another weekly wrap up. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.